I almost forgot it, Jimmy. I almost forgot it, Jimmy. <laughs> You've been doing pretty good lately, so. I know. I just, I almost forgot it. Mm-hmm. I like look and I see the icon. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the icon. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but, but like I was, like we were saying before I started the recording, it's that whole should have had a V8 and trust me moment. Pretty much is what God does when randomly he blesses us or he brings somebody to remind us that we're on the right path. Always trust and obey and always listen for that still small voice when it comes to that. Now, I'm going to I'm going to try to type all this into a chat so we have the prayer list. That you guys can copy. For salvation, Jasmine. Antonio. I went to hit comma and I accidentally hit enter. Antonio. Uh, Try to think of the names here. Steven. And I'm, hopefully I'm spelling this per- these folks' names right. Hello. Oh, I'm here. I'm just trying to type. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who- Isaac, God bless you. Hey. See you, brother. How you doing? Uh, not great. I got a fever right now. Oh, brother. So we're putting you in there, too. Hey, Isaac. Hey. Good to see you, my brother. It is. Glad you could make it. I'm, I'm in the chat for the Zoom meeting, typing names here for it. So I put you in there too. I've got to just move you over. <laughs> there we go. Because Grandma Wolf, <laughs> I always use you as Grandma Wolf there, Marcy. Wolf, Isaac. <laughs> I'm going to put it as medical in mountains. <laughs> yeah. Cordero. MST, which is natural state transparency and APA mountains. <laughs> That's my way of saying unspoken requests. Mm. Because God already knows our requests. Tim's family, which was the officer that I was telling you about, Tim Evan. Yeah. Tim's family. (laughs) Kimmy, who's battling blindness. And she's struggling financially over that. Linda and Alan. Linda's still battling cancer and Alan's battling other medical issues. Matthew who had a heart attack, stroke, and then when he returned to work, he got attacked. So I haven't had an update on them. So I'm going to keep them in prayer. Pandora's grandfather. We cannot forget (laughs) Pandora's grandfather. Is he doing better, Chaplain? As far as I know, she hasn't let me know. He's undergoing, he had to undergo a surgery for a uh, procedure. Uh, I know Bill Crayer, B. B. Crayer. Bill, he's battling medical issues. I guess Debbie Pearson. Yep. We got to put Shan in there because it's her birthday. Amen. (laughs) Yeah. Nani, because of her medical issues. A young lady named Karen. I'm just going to put her as Karen. Um, she's been, she's an older woman, but she has a drug addicted son. 
So deliverance from that. So we're going to put it as deliverance. There goes my phone. Oh. And that's getting blocked. I hate spam. That was a spam call. <laughs> just trying to see who else I need to put on here. I'm just trying to gather all these people's names. You got Kaylin on there, Chaplain? Yeah. Okay. No, I got to put her with you. So let me find Grandma Wolf. <laughs> Boy, I've created a list. Probably about what four envelope each by deep by now. Oh, it is. If I was to write them all down, it would take me an hour. <clears throat> there we go. I got Kaylin in there. These are the ones that are what I've gotten on the first page. You know what I mean? We're gonna keep Benita in prayer too. <clears throat> Then also steadfastness and strength for all the believers. There we go. Cool. <laughs> Boy, that's a lot of typing. <laughs> Forgive me if I did not capitalize everybody's names. Forgive me for that, guys. Oh, uh, that's okay. My hands, sometimes I just can't hit the shift key with my nerves. Sorry. But let us go ahead and we're going to open up in prayer. I did miss one and uh, Frankie. I did miss Frankie and Connie. How's she been doing, Isaac? She's good. She's back home now. Um, she was here. She was at my house for a few weeks. So that's why that's why I, I've kind of been a MIA, but she's yeah. good. She's she's back home now and she's recovering. Praise God. So we're gonna give him the glory for that, that she's returned home. Amen. She's safe. Uh that's <laughs> that's why I kept her in our prayers every week. And you can ask uh Jimmy there. That's something I mention every week when we have our Bible studies is to keep praying so that way you guys know that we're not ashamed to pray for our brothers and sisters and even our enemies but let us go ahead and get started here and we're going to bow our heads heavenly father we just lift up your children right now oh lord those that we mentioned tonight so many right now lord and many more are battling issues mountains financial issues medical issues oh lord they're battling enemies at their doorstep, Lord. Give them strength and courage and steadfastness and trust in you, O oh Lord. Give them the peace that passes all understanding. We thank you for hearing our cries for your children, those that have gotten better, even those that have entered into their heavenly rest, O oh God. We give you thanks for that, O oh Lord, that you took them out of their pain and suffering and that you freed them from the bondage of flesh. Lord, those that are needing salvation, draw them to your side, O oh God. Call them to you, O oh Lord. Give them the heart to change for you, O oh God. Give them the peace in knowing you, O oh Lord. Give them the desire to seek after you, O oh Lord. Lord, as we open our Bibles up tonight in our studies, bless the ears. Bless the tongues, bless the eyes to see your truths and hear your words. Not through pride, not through envy, not through surmisings, not through vain babbling. But give them the strength, O oh Lord. Set a hedge of protection around your children tonight, O oh God. Especially those that have to drive, like Cordero, O oh Lord. Those that are battling legal issues and medical issues, and are under the weather. You are the great physician, O oh Lord. And you are our banner. And you always go ahead of us in a fight. And we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 amen.
Ooh, hallelujah. As we go back to Proverbs, uh, we did Proverbs 10 last week. And I'm going to skip back for a second to Proverbs 10 so that Isaac, you can see this here. Okay. Because right here, from this chapter to the 5 and 20th are sundry observations of moral virtues and talk. Moral virtues and their contrary vices. So from 10 through 25 are moral virtues uh, and their contraries. Things that are opposites. So that way you see both. And they kind of overlap throughout these chapters. Last week we talked, uh, last uh, Sunday night when we had the late Bible study, we talked about these Proverbs of Solomon were also prophecy of Jesus Christ's coming. And, a, and Christ fulfilled a lot of these for us. But there's still standards we must keep. And so as we read these here, and we're in, here in Proverbs 11, let us keep in mind that Solomon was a prophet in many ways that people didn't realize it was in his writings especially here in Proverbs. And a lot of people misunderstand it. So I wanted you guys to be prepared and on the even keel with that. But let us go ahead and start here in verse one. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride cometh, then come a shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. You know how we always say pride comes before the fall? Yeah. Okay, an imbalance. A false balance. A false sense of righteousness, right? Yeah. Would be an abomination to God, wouldn't it? It would. So that's what he's talking about here. And that's why one and two go together. When pride cometh, then come a shame. Because the more proud and boastful you become, the more shameful you really are. But when you are humble and meek, and this doesn't mean to be a pushover, guys. A lot of people will say this means to just be a pushover. No, it doesn't. Humility and peacefulness and pleasantness and how you take care of others and how you serve others. We were talking about it before I hit record uh, there, Marcy. We were talking about it where the servant's heart. That's where true humility is. Is, the, is that willingness to serve others without any recognition or gain. And a lot of people don't understand that that servant's heart is what Jesus was teaching us. Greater ha love hath no man than this, except that he lay his life for another, right? Yep. And I paraphrase yeah. it. But exactly what Christ was talking about is true humility comes with the servant's heart. It's not that we are forced to serve, it's that we are willing to serve. And not for our glory, but for God's glory. That's exactly what he means by lowly. <laughs> Now, I like this next one. Can anybody define integrity for me? Um, being someone who does the right thing, <clears throat> even though uh, no one else is watching. Yeah, amen. It's exactly what we were talking about a couple months ago. It's doing what is right when no one's watching. And that's, so that, I want that to be in your mind when we read this. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Doing what is right when no one's watching. I, I, I drill this home at least once a week. A toe-in-the-water Christian or a half-baked Christian cannot truly serve God. And I don't mean a stoned Christian. I'm not talking about marijuana. But a half-baked bread is useless, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, if you're supposed to be eating unleavened bread, if you accidentally spill yeast in it, is it still unleavened bread? Um, 
I'm guessing not. It's not. It's not unleavened bread. Yeah. This is exactly what happens when we dabble in sin. That's where the perverseness, oh, God's not going to care about this. I can get away with this. That's the flesh rising up. That's what he means by the perverseness. It's that compromise. When we compromise our integrity, that God's not going to notice this. God's not going to hold this to me. That's very perverse thinking. And somebody's whispering, you remember, I don't know if you guys are old enough. A lot of you are, but a lot of you aren't. The old cartoon where you see the devil on one shoulder and the ain't and God on the other. Yeah, yeah. People feel old, Chaplain. What was that? <laughs> I said, way to make people feel old, Chaplain. I, hey, I'll be 50 this year, sister. I remember. I, it well. this year. I remember. It well. I, That's why I'm I <laughs> And you always see that little devil going, no one's going to notice it. Go ahead and do it. Do it, do it, do it. That's the way Satan works. That's how Satan truly works. He always tricks us. But that's that perverseness. No one's going to notice it. No one's going to notice it. When in actuality, God already noticed it and knew it before you did it. But how about greed? How about greed, guys? I think Sister Bonita made it. Ugh. Yep, there's Sister Bonita. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I didn't want to interrupt. Hi. <laughs> there's Hi, guys. Hi, Angel. <laughs> we can always stop for somebody coming in. <laughs> we always stop. When we, when we, that's a blessing. Yeah, it's good to learn these. <laughs> well, we were right there on verse four, I believe. <laughs> Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Being lazy, greed, what's in it for me mentalities. This is what he's talking about. It. Look at me mentality. You see that, right? What am I going to get out of this? Yeah, that's what he's talking about. But living for God, what glory can I give God today? What glory can I show others that God did for them? That's what delivers us from it. Is It's our faith in action. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. yeah. It's not works, but faith in action. And, a lot, and that's where that whole... We've all heard the statement, uh, faith without works is dead, works without faith is dead. It no longer becomes work because it's an act of faith. What we do isn't for our glory, but for his glory. So is it truly work? That's the question I want to ask you guys. Is it truly work if you're doing it for God's glory? No. It's not, is it? <laughs> This is where a lot of people think we do this for our own glory. <clears throat> this is what the world can't understand. But I like verse 5. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. <clears throat> That's just what we were talking about, our faith in action. Because we desire to no longer live as we used to live, slaves to sin. But what are we seeing in this world? The wickedness of this world, right? Yep. And yeah. what's happening? How many are going bankrupt? How these rich billion dollar businesses are just going belly up and tanking as they sell out to the world? Just to name a couple, Sears. Oh. Woolworth Bud Light Bud Light <clears throat> what was that one Black Rifle Coffee Company yeah. Liberty Safe <clears throat> see this is what he meant by 
the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. <clears throat> and I love what it says here next. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. But transgressors, I can't talk again. Here we go, getting tongue tied. But transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. I'm going to ask you guys a question. This is a very, very, very poignant thought, but I want you guys to answer this. Any one of you can answer it. Is there such a thing as a secret sin? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> because God sees everything. He's omniscient and omnipresent. So that is... He knows it comes out of your head, the thought. The mere thought of it is a sin. <laughs> yes. He knows the very thought. You're right, sister. But that's what he means by this, where he says transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Now, this next one here in verse seven, it's kind of a tricky one, but I want you to really, really read it with me. When a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish, and the hope of unjust men perisheth. <laughs> <clears throat> we've all seen these people that were thinking, oh, I'll live forever. I don't need to go to God. I don't need God. I don't need God. And they get hit by a bus. And they're dead. And now their family's squabbling over who gets the, the money, who gets the house. And it creates a lot of division, don't it? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and the loss of that person is forgotten, right? Right. Yeah. Doesn't that make sense now? <coughs> yeah. Now look right, look what comes next. The righteous is delivered. This is a promise for you, sister Marcy. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. And the wicked cometh in his stead. You see how the wicked wind up in trouble and the, the righteous are delivered from trouble? Yeah. Like I said before, Satan has no power or authority over you. This whole evil that's coming against you and Kalen, it's come, you're going to get delivered from it. Mark my word, there's a promise right here in the word of God. And we all love this next one in verse 9. <laughs> I got a chuckle out of this one. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge, the just shall the just be delivered. Isn't that a kind of a promise Christ made in, in chapter 5 of Matthew? Isn't that, a, isn't that the promises and the Beatitudes? I think so. Good evening, Loki. <laughs> What's up, doggy? That's Sister Marcy's Loki. <laughs> but I'm going to switch over to Matthew 5, and then we're going to come back to this one. Okay? All right. Because I'm going to show you the connection and the prophecy being fulfilled when I switch over to Matthew 5. That's why I love this software, because I can switch. Matthew 5. Right here. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which hung, do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Do you see that promise summed up? Yeah. 
but nobody ever connects Matthew 5 to Proverbs 11. And I don't know why. Unfortunately, I do not know why they don't do it. Because it's critical that we hear it from Christ's words too. The same, pro same promise that Solomon gave. And this is hundreds of years before Christ when Solomon lived. But then Christ says the same thing in his own words. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You see the yeah. prophecy and then you see the prophecy fulfilled in Christ. People do not connect the dots. <laughs> we have to connect the dots, family. I'm going to ask a question before we continue. Is the Old Testament just as relevant as the New Testament today? Absolutely. Amen. This is where we glean, we get, not glean, but gain our strength in knowing the prophecy first, then seeing the fulfillment of that prophecy. Proph I can't talk again. Prophecy. Even in Christ's day, the prophecies were fulfilled. And even more so now, we are seeing more prophecies being filled. How would you know that it's a prophecy being filled if you don't study the old and bring it forth to the new? This is why I ask people these questions. Let's go back here. <clears throat> but look at verse 9 again. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbors, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So, uh, Sister Benita, I know you like to take notes. So take uh, Proverbs 11, 9 and mark it over in Matthew 5, where we were a minute ago. Okay. That way you can bring the two together so it makes sense, okay? Okay. That'll help you out when you're going through persecution. <laughs> even mental persecution, where it's not even anyone else, but it's your own mind doing it to you. <laughs> Been there. On <Done> that. <laughs> yeah. I'll be the first to admit it. I've even persecuted myself. There's no way God's going to use me like this and I have a random guy come today and tell me, hey, keep doing what you're doing. God said to keep doing what you're doing. It's like, hello, should have had a V8, but instead you should have been listening, George. <laughs> That's how good God is. Oh, When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoiceth. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. I'm going to ask you guys a question about America. Not getting into politics or conspiracies, guys. But actual, a comment. Do you think America's too far gone to be, to be healed? Or do you think it's by one righteous person praying? It could change anything. I mean, you can go about two different ways on that. I mean, I think that the world, it, it can be saved. But, I mean, it, it's all up to us. And I don't think that there's enough. But I think that this is the plan is for it to, to crumble this way. And then rebuild the way that God wanted it. Boom. Best answer I've ever heard. Wow. Exactly. It's only, Earth is only here. And our nations and our countries and our continents are temporary. 100%, brother. 100%. Ooh, hallelujah. I believe that um, what's, I believe that was, that what was, what was prophesized in the revelation is starting to come true. Yeah. And 100%. Yeah. 
We're definitely having what's it called birthing pains. Yeah, the birthing pains have begun. Or everyone yeah. thinks it's global warming. It's not global warming. This earth was never supposed to be permanent. Because didn't Christ say, "Behold, a new heaven and a new earth"? Yeah. And there won't be a need for a sun and a moon because Jesus is pure light. Huh. That speaks volumes. And every one of you guys, that was 100% accurate. And I'm glad you said that. I really am. Because it could be taken two ways. Because we could be thinking that, like in, uh, what was it, Sodom and Gomorrah. If I find one righteous in there. Or no, that wasn't Sodom and Gomorrah. I can't remember what city that was. But he said, if I find one righteous in there, I will not destroy the city. That was Sodom and Gomorrah. It was Lot and yeah, his wife. Yeah, it was Lot. Lot and his wife. Yeah, that's right. That was Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, yeah. Second guessing myself. <clears throat> Thank you. But, but then we know that 2,023 years has passed since Jesus went away. Not much time left. So by reason, we are in the birthing pains. But I'll, that's where we come to verse 12. And this is where God's patting us on our back for studying. Because <laughs> guess what? I think we got our answer right here. He that despise, he that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. <clears throat> but a man of understanding holdeth his peace, holdeth his peace. You notice with wisdom, we don't we don't envy our neighbor. We don't sit there and look over the fence to see what he's got today. The more closer we're to God, we're not concerned about what he has. We're more concerned about what we can do for God. That's what he means by this. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. How many of us know about the, and I know we talked about this Sunday, Jimmy, about the busy bodies in the back pew? <laughs> yeah, gossiping. Yep. Oh, did you hear what so-and-so said to me? Did you hear this? Did you see that? Did you see what she's doing over there? But I like what it says here. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. When people privately speak to me and not on a public platform, but they privately message me or text me, I will not reveal that. If it is said in confidence, it stays in confidence unless we are asked to share that publicly. And that is honoring God. And that goes for any of us. We ain't supposed to be busy bodies gap, gossiping and saying what so-and-so said to create a fight. We are to hold in confidence what is said in confidence. Just so you guys know. And I like this next one. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Do you know what you know what Jesus called it? Being a brother's keeper. You know, being a keeper, standing in the gap for your brother and sister. When they are falling short or they're struggling and they don't have any good answer and they come to you and they ask you for advice. Have you noticed they ask you and then they ask other people too? Yeah, it's it's because they're looking for the answer that they want to hear. They are. They're trying to seek the answer. But if multiple people say the same answer and they've never talked about it, what's that person going to realize? <laughs> they may not like the answer. But they're going to realize that God is speaking and not the person they're going to. 
<laughs> That's what he means by in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Good Christians will always hear God speak and give the person the answer that they need, not the answer they want. And when many speak the same message, because it's not our message, it's God's message. It's going to stop that person from going anywhere else. And then they're going to want to know more. And guess what you just did? You snatched another one from the fire. <coughs> what do we know? What do, I'm going to ask you guys, and then I'm going to pop the definition up by hovering over the word. He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for him. And he that hateth suretish, suretiship, that's a good one for us. Suretiship is sure. Do you see the definitions, guys, on my screen? Yeah. To traffic as, as if by bother, but it's also the third one. Also, are give to be security as kind of an exchange. Who guarantees for a stranger shall smart? You will pay for it 10 times 10. If you guaranteed somebody you don't know, you will suffer. You will suffer morally for it. Another word for that is usury, just so you know. But that's what it means. Never guarantee for somebody that is not known. Just look at definition three, to become bondsman by hand clasping. To say, I guarantee he's going to pay you back. Help him out. When you don't know the person. God said, let your yeas be your yeas and your nays be your nays. Right? This is a warning to never guarantee anything on your word for anyone else but yourself. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you, because a lot of us will be, if you've ever done job searches, and I know we all have, they ask for a personal reference as along with a um, professional references. Is this the same as surety? No. It's not. Because you know the person. You've dealt with the person for years. But if someone goes, hey, I need help getting a job and you've only known them a week, wouldn't that be considered a surety? Because you haven't truly got to know that person. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of a bad example, but it's it's accurate. Oh, and people get mad when I they go, Can I use you as I don't even know you, dude? I haven't even known you that long. I'm not going to put my name on something on somebody I haven't gotten to know. And they've gotten upset and said, Well, you're never really a friend. I said, There's a difference between being a friend and being honest, and that goes back to integrity. Well, good friends tell people what they don't want to hear. Amen. True friends do, yeah. Accurate. <laughs> but for our, our women here, I want you to read this one. A gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. A gracious woman. That would be a humble God honoring, God fearing, God serving woman. And strong. Are they talking about physical strong or are they talking about spiritually strong here? Spiritually. Spiritually. Amen. Because our riches aren't on this earth. Nothing we do on this earth is going to matter once we enter that heavenly rest. And literally, if we built the house, is that going to go towards our righteousness? No. no. 
if we have a million dollars in the bank account, are we going to be able to take it with us to heaven? No. So when we read this, make sure we are understanding that it's spiritually strong. Hmm. Retain riches. And I love this next one. I make a joke at work that I'm one of the grumpy old men. <laughs> All the time. I tell people I'm the grumpy old man you don't want to meet when you when you do something wrong, you know? And I just do it as a joke. But reading this one next verse puts me in my place for that. So I might not be doing it anymore. I definitely won't be doing it anymore. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Wouldn't that be an abuser of mankind? A user? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what a cruel is. Telling people what they want to hear. Sugar coaters. Hit your ears. That's what he's talking about. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but him that to him that knoweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Remember I told you, Sister Benita, to keep fighting the good fight? Yes, you always do. Right there it is. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Sometimes you don't see God working in someone's life. And out of the blue, something you did allow God to work through you and into that person and change their life. That made me jump. Uh, one of our hay rakes just went down the road and that one of his hay, hay rakes dropped and hit the pavement. <laughs> but I like this next one. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. You know, we talked, I believe it's in Mark where he says he gave them over to a reprobate mind. Do you guys remember us talking about that? He gave themselves over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. This is exactly what Solomon was prophesying about. Some he gave over to a reprobate mind. Right here. Those that do evil and mock God, they do it so vehemently and so proudfully that they go to their death hating God for no reason. And anything to do with God, including his children. And they seek to destroy anything good that is around them. And they do it so well that look look right. I mean, I could say White House, and you guys can name fifteen people that have been in it, or more. How about in your own neighborhood? Probably fifty or sixty people you know that are like that, that you've become acquainted to in your area, even in your job. But those that seek God's will don't allow themselves. There we go. Don't allow themselves to go that route. They don't let the bitterness that comes at them enter into their mind and let it affect them. Instead, they lean on God and trust God's work and trust that God has a hedge of protection around them. Sure, we might feel weakened, feel like we're just not, we're just getting ready to give up. But then all of a sudden, somebody comes into our life and goes, hey, hey, we need to talk. You seem a little bit depressed. Or God wants me to share the scripture with you. Has anyone experienced that besides me? Me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brother George. Yeah. <laughs> when I was going through heartbreak. We've all experienced it, Sister Benita. Yep. Yeah. 
uh, the other night, Sister Grace did it to me. Out of the blue, popped up with a prayer for me. I thought I was hiding it well. No, Sister Grace did it. That gentleman today. It's amazing how God always sends a messenger when we're weakest. So let's go ahead and continue. They that are of a froward heart, we know that's a pride-filled heart, right? Envious, pride-filled heart. They are an abomination to the Lord. But such as are upright in their way are his delight. And a lot of people misunderstand this where it says their way. He's talking of uh, ones that are scripturally aligned. Scripturally aligned. Those that have a personal relationship with Christ and live for Christ are his delight. That's a promise from God. You know, there's times that we do something and nobody notices it. And we just walk on and do something else. I can guarantee you God is up there going, look, look at my child down there. Look, look what he did, Jesus. And Jesus is going to be like, yeah, dad, I taught him well. <laughs> I could just imagine seeing Jesus doing that and God doing that. Nobody noticed what he did, but I did. I seen what he did. And boy, I'm, I'm celebrating it. How about that times nine percent uh, of us doing that? That's not many. But that's what's the remnant of this world. God's up there dancing with the light. He's calling the angels in to show them. See, that's my children. Just remember that promise goes with integrity. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. When he is talking about this, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. Those that made a deal with the devil, it's what he's talking about here, guys. Go hand join in hand. That is a contract with Satan to do something to someone else, to make them subservient to them. So when you hear those words, hand join hand, he's talking about basically selling out your soul to Satan. The wicked shall not go unpunished, shall not be unpunished. They are going to receive their just rewards. But the promise is in the next verse. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So I'm going to ask you guys, if you've been ministering to people like we're all supposed to, and some say, <clears throat> let me think about it. And then someone else ministers to them. Then someone else ministers to them. And all of a sudden, one day they get saved. Do you think that your first ministering to them mattered any different? Okay, can you go back and repeat that? If you Sorry. start to minister to somebody right. and you you sowed the seed initially and they go, well, I'm not ready yet to accept it. Let me think about it. Then someone else ministers to them. And then someone else ministers to them. And then all of a sudden, one day they accept Christ. Do you think what you did is meaningless at the beginning? No. It meant more because you opened the door. Right. You let them in. <clears throat> you let them in. You planted. That other person water, watered it. That other person fertilized it. Then God made it rain. 
<laughs> it don't matter if you were the first one or the third one or the second one. God sees it as one continuous work to salvation. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. Let's go ahead. Now let's look here at verse 22. A jewel of gold in a swine's snout. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout. I had to reread that, guys. So is a fair woman, which is without discretion. I know you guys are probably going to laugh when I say this, but you put lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. Hmm. Right? Yep. Yep exactly what he's saying here you paint a turd it's still a turd so no matter what you do to a wicked heart it's not going to change that heart unless they desire to change no matter how much bedazzling you do <laughs> the desire of the righteous is only good but the expectation of the wicked is wrath how many people have you seen how angry rich people get? How violently angry they get when they don't get their way. The Karens out there. The Karens and the Richards, yep. We've all witnessed it, haven't we? You know, it's exactly what he's saying here. They get more angrier than us. Poor people, you know, they get more angry than people that have nothing because we count it all as loss for the sake of the cross, right? <clears throat> and that goes with this next one. How about these people that try to create division amongst everybody? There is that, there is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. Poverty. That's exactly what he's talking about. Those that create division and try to create their own clique. Have we seen that as well? People, yeah. drivers, look at how many people follow me. Yeah. Those are the collectors. They don't care if they're teaching you what you need to hear. They're going to teach you what you what they want to hear. You're going to teach them what, what they want to hear just to keep more there. That We have a lot of false witnesses, don't we, in the church today that are doing this. And I love this next one, you guys. You can all chuckle with me. The liberal. <laughs> I know you all are going to laugh when I read it, so... I want you all to chuckle with me. <laughs> the liberal soul <laughs> shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also to himself. <laughs> that it says it all. Uh, that was uh, explanatory. That says it right there. <laughs> yep, 100%. They're retaining water. They're bloated. <laughs> bloated egos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I just, this one's got me laughing. I bet people Chibble. don't realize that's in the Word of God. <laughs> oh, that was oh, hilarious. It's been a while since I read it, too. So that's why it caught me off guard. Mm. Yeah, as soon as I heard that word, <laughs> that's where you heard it first was the Bible. No. Nope. He that withholded corn. The people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. How many of these people hoard food? And even though they know somebody needs it and they still won't give it up. Even though they know somebody has nothing to eat. Been there. Been there. Mm -hmm. you? We've all been there. But then we get two cans of, and I'm going to stay with the corn analogy. But we don't sell a thing. We hand it off to somebody, one of the two cans, knowing that we don't know where our next meal is coming from, but we give one can to someone else. 
<clears throat> That's what he means by, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean for you to physically sell it for money. <clears throat> what you're talking about here is selling it for God's glory. Does that make sense now? Yeah. Because you you need it to survive one more day. You've got a can for you to eat right now. And you have a second can. And instead of holding it, knowing you have nothing for tomorrow, but you're going to hold it and say, well, I can't give it up. I won't have nothing to eat tomorrow. But then those that go, here, I know you're hungry. They give one up to somebody else. We're selling it for the kingdom. We're not hoarding what we actually need tomorrow. That goes with worry you not for what comes tomorrow, for I will, it will worry for itself. Does that make sense? I love Proverbs. This is amazing. But I know you all are going to keep that liberal one. Yeah. You all are going to be keeping that one handy. <laughs> that one's funny and it's had you in <laughs> this next one's very good too he that diligently seeketh good procureth favor but he that seeketh mischief it shall come unto him <laughs> don't go poking the hornet's nest guys it will come to you you stir up a hornet's nest they're going to come at you or you go poking a stick at a rattlesnake. Or the guy tapping the nose of the lion until he goes off on him. Do you, you see the analogies I'm using? He that diligently seeketh good. If you look for negativity, what are you going to get back? Negativity. If you seek grace, what are you going to get back? Grace. Seven times seven times seven. The more kind you are, and the more peaceful you are, and the more humble you are, it's going to come back to you. Seven times seven times seven. Seven times 70 times seven. Excuse me. God's perfect numbers. <laughs> And I like the next two. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. We all know that story in Jesus' words, don't we? If you be in a good, good tree, can you bring forth evil fruit? Or can an uh, evil tree bring forth good fruit? No. Right here it is in Solomon's pro, uh, prophecies and his, his teachings. Jesus made sure that we knew the Old Testament was relevant. And he made sure to fulfill the prophecies in Solomon. Because all Solomon wrote here was, he that trusteth in his riches shall fall. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. <clears throat> Pardon me for a minute. Let me get a drink of water. Mm. It's the very good teachings here in Proverbs. <clears throat> Look at the next one. I laugh at this one. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. What do you think he means? And I'm going to ask you guys to just give me your guys' take on that verse. <clears throat> he that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. <clears throat> what is your guys' interpretation? Messing up your own house <clears throat> spiritually, physically. Spiritually, yeah. You're going to open up the door to demonics, aren't you? Mm -hmm. It's exactly what he's talking about. <clears throat> and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. Because what's going to happen once all manners of evil come upon a house after you've played games? They're going to come to somebody that's Christian, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They go, I don't know what I did, what I did. But I need help in my house. My wife is leaving me. My money's, I'm going bankrupt. I can't get my car to run. I can't get the lights to quit flickering. I can't get the plates to stop flying across the room. Everyone's like, oh, it's just ghosts. No, it isn't. They're demons. But things like that will happen in your home because you're opening it to the demonics. You nailed that one perfectly, sister. <laughs> Alcoholism. Drug addiction. They're all manners of evil, and they're all demonic. But the next one is a prize for all of us. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Isn't that what we were talking about a little bit ago, guys? About sowing the seed, and then someone else helps, someone else helps. But that soul was snatched from the fire. It's exactly what he's saying here. Rescuing the lost. <laughs> but I like verse 31. And you guys should be highlighting verse 31 in your Bibles. Behold, the righteous shall be re recompensed in the earth. Much more wicked much more the wicked and the sinner. Remember, we're not storing treasures on this earth, right? Uh, but God sees it and he opens floodgates of blessings back, don't he? Amen. Good. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something happens to bless you and you get a better job offer. Or out of the blue, somebody gives you a car. Out of the blue, hey, somebody gives me a bus pass because I ain't got a license to drive. Or, oh, wow, somebody left me groceries at my door knowing I was out of food. <laughs> <laughs> the heat's getting to me. That's what it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> But this is what I want you to see, though. Much more the wicked and the sinner. Oh, they're going to be 10 times 10 dealt with. I can guarantee that. <clears throat> they're going to be perpetually suffering. Nothing that they do is going to make them happy. <clears throat> the more you think it's good to sin... And it's okay to even do a one little white lie. <laughs> and then you wonder why things are hitting you upside the head. <clears throat> this kind of issue, that kind of issue. And I'm not saying that <clears throat> we're guilty of anything to deserve some of the crap that comes our way. But these people are getting hit from all different sides. And there is no relief for them. With Christians and with God's children, we are delivered from that wickedness coming our way because Christ is there taking the beatings for us. Right? Didn't he say he would always send a comforter in times of grief? And who is that comforter? The Holy Spirit. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me. Or if you guys want something to say, go ahead. <clears throat> Take a drink, Captain. I'm gonna try. <laughs> That's why I took a break for me. I'm let you guys go ahead and. So far, we've read two full chapters of these moral virtues and their contraries. What is the common theme through it all? That's a question I'm going to ask you guys. What's the common theme through both of these chapters so far? Integrity. Yeah. 100% integrity. Humility and the promise of what Christ is going to do, right? Yeah. yeah. For those that seek his will and seek his way. And it's going to, it, it warns us of falling away or stepping off the path, right? Yeah. A scary thought that we that the prophecies that the comments that Christ made, the parables that Christ made, line up with Proverbs 10 and 11 and all the way down to 25 100 percent. And we're gonna go through them because I feel it necessary to do so. And never be afraid to ask questions, guys. Never be afraid to ask questions. I always tell people, you know, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. Amen. I've said that a thousand times. <laughs> There's no such thing as a dumb question except for the one unasked. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <coughs> but, you know, Satan likes to think, well, I don't want to interrupt the, the, the teacher. I don't want to interrupt him. It don't matter. Interrupt me. Stop me if you have a question, guys. Or if you have insight that you want to share. Stop me. That's This is a learning time right now. This time we study to show ourselves approved together. I'm not rigid like that where it's formal. You, when, when Sister Minnie is like, I didn't want to interrupt. You are not interrupting. We love to know when people are here and we like to welcome people and that's who we are. It's always good to have family come in to join, you know, the house of the Lord. That's the way I look at it. It's always great to know that there's another family member stepping in. <clears throat> but we got to stay on the path, not become slothful, not become lazy. Not become greedy of things on this earth, but stay focused on the cross. Trying to close this. There we go. <clears throat> but let us go ahead and close tonight in prayer. If any of you guys want to go ahead and pray, go ahead and you guys will, and then I'll close out the prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just lift up our your children tonight, O oh Lord. As we read your word and we hunger and thirst for your righteousness, O oh God, we thank you for teaching us and leading us, O oh God. We thank you and praise you for coming together with other brothers and sisters tonight to take what you would have us know, O oh Lord. Not sugar-coated, not half-hearted, but learning together in fellowship with you, O oh Lord. We welcome the Holy Spirit and we thank you for your teachings tonight, O oh God. We ask you to watch over all of us tonight, O oh Lord. Bless our rest tonight and our times with our families. 
Give us strength to be the voice for you, O God. Give us courage and hope. And let us not privately interpret your word, but by your very word, live. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And before we go, guys, uh, keep Sister Lisa and Gina in prayer. Uh, they had a moment today where they broke down again. Just keep them in prayer, okay? Oh, I, I just wanted to remind you if I missed it earlier. <clears throat> With that said, guys, give me a second. I'll stop the recording. Mm -hmm.